Hello friends, after completing the chapter, we are again here to solve the question answer part of the chapter that is current electricity. As you all know that we have covered almost the complete chapter with the theory, with the numericals. Now it's time to just solve the question for J main exam, J advanced pattern, NEET pattern and CBSC pattern. Right here we are going to do the question that will be based on your J main pattern for the chapter current electricity. So now without wasting much of our time we will be moving towards the first question of the session and I will just check it out what is the question number one. So the question number one says that two electric bulbs marked as 25 watt, 220 volt and 100 watt, 220 volt. These are the two specifications of two bulbs that has been given over here. They are connected in series to a 440 volt supply. So which of the bulbs will fuse? Whether any of the bulb is going to be fused or not. So we have been given the four options. Whether both of the bulb will get fused, only 100 watt bulb, only 25 watt bulb or none of these. So what we have to check it out here, you can see over here 220 volt and 220 volt both are being supplied with the same voltage. So we know that we are having one formula before us that is P equals to V square divided by R where P is your power, V is the voltage and R is your resistance. In the given two bulbs what we have with us is first power is 25 watt and P2 is 100 watt. Now my dear students what we can observe since voltage in the given question is same that is 220 volt. So from here directly I can say that P is inversely proportional to R isn't it? So now here you can say that P2 is having more power. Since it is having more power then that means it will be having lower resistance. So that means resistance of this P1 that means 25 watt bulb is higher because its power is low so that means its resistance is definitely going to be higher. Now because the def uh, now because the resistance is higher that means what? That means in this case in the circuit where the two bulbs are connected which is having same voltage supply one is having higher resistance one is having lower resistance. Since their voltage is same so current and one important thing they are connected in series. So if they are connected in series let me just show you by drawing like this. Say these are two bulbs. When they both are connected in series, what will happen? The current in both the currents will same in both the bulbs will remain same. Now if current is same, one resistance is higher, second is lower. So definitely the one with higher resistance is going to be heated more. So the one which is getting heated more that is going to be fused at that time. So that means the resistance or you can say the bulb which is having power 25 watt it is going to be fused. So the option that we are having with us here we can see that 25 watt bulb. So that means this bulb is going to be fused alright. So this question is completed as I have already told you in the theory that if you have learned the theory in the very easy manner or you understood all the concepts this is not going to be tougher for you. We will be now moving towards the next question and the question number second says that in the given circuit that has been shown below the key is closed at t equals to 0. The current through the battery is what? In the given circuit we have been given one voltage supply, one key, one inductance, one resistor that 
that is R1, another resistor having value R2. Now here what is what are they saying at t equals to 0. As you know that if we are talking about the inductor, if I talk about the inductor at t equals to 0, this is the property of inductor that at t equals to 0, inductor behaves as an infinite resistance. Now since it is behaving as infinite resistance that means no current is going to be flown through this inductance. Now in this circuit if no current will be flowing towards this uh, in this suppose this is now has been removed the yellow portion this has now been removed. Now you are left with one voltage supply one key and the resistance R2. So now the current in the remaining circuit will be let me just current in the circuit at t equals to 0 i equals to v upon r2 that will be the current in the circuit. So in the given option what we have seen v upon r2 at t equals to 0 v upon r1 r2 under root r1 square plus r2 square at t equals to 0. First of all we have to see that we have to check out the current at t equals to 0. So from these four options v upon rt at t equals to 0 I can see there are two options that has been available for us. So that means definitely option number d and option number a can be reduced from here. Now we have to check the current at t equals to infinity. So as we have seen that at t equals to 0 the inductor behaves as an infinite resistance. We will now check at t equals to infinity how does the inductor behave? At t equals to infinity inductor behaves as a conducting wire. It behaves as a conducting wire. As you know that if something is behaving as a conducting wire that means the current is going to be flown through this wire. Now I am going to remove this yellow portion from here that means you are now having with you as this complete circuit. That means this L is now behaving just as an wire nothing else. So now I am going to remove this L this is just behaving as a conducting wire. So you are left with R1 and R2. Now if I am going to find out the current in the circuit I will be taking the R equivalent of the circuit. That means the combination of these two resistors here you can see these R1 and R2 they are connected in parallel. So R equivalent at that condition will be R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. This will be your R equivalent at t equals to infinity. Now in this case what is the current? Now the current will be I equals to V upon R equivalent. So you can directly put this value R equivalent. So we will be having R1 R2 R1 plus R2. This is the value of current I at t equals to infinity. So now we have to check it out from the options available that whether I is coming out to be equals to this or not. V into R1 plus R2 upon R1 R2 and the second one is V R1 R2 upon under root R1 square plus under root R2 square. That means this option is going to be deducted. The correct answer for the question is this. All right. So that was the easy question. As I already told you if you are clear with this concept so no question is going to be tougher for you. We will be uh, now moving towards the 
next question of the session and the question says that let me just remove it first and then I will be reading it for you. Okay. So, the question number 3 says that two conductors have the same resistance at 0 degrees Celsius, but their temperature coefficient of resistance are alpha 1 and alpha 2. The respective temperature coefficients of their series and parallel combination would be what? So, what we have to do? We have to find the series and parallel combination of their temperature coefficients, right? How we are going to proceed with this question is a very simple thing. We know that the combination of the two resistors when they are connected in series is what? If I am writing it as that will be Rs equals to R1 plus R2 and if I talk about the parallel combi uh, combination that will be Rp equals to R1, R2 upon R1 plus R2. Now, as they are saying that uh, they are having the same temperature coefficient at 0 degree Celsius or you can say they are having the same resistance at 0 degree Celsius. So, let me just write at 0 degree Celsius their resistances are R0 and R0, right? One formula that we know about the temperature coefficient is that R equals to R0 1 plus alpha into T, right students? If you know this formula, you can easily apply this formula to solve this particular question. So, how we are going to apply this here? We know that we are going to find out the parallel and series combination of their temperature coefficients. So, how we are going to proceed? We are going to apply this formula and these combinations into this. So, first of all for series combination, if I will be talking about the series combination, we know that R s equals to R 1 plus R 2, right? So, let me just write here R s equals to R 1 plus R 2. If I will be putting the value of R 1 plus R 2, that will be, let me just put this as R s naught 1 plus alpha s into theta. Now, I am taking one particular temperature theta. Let me just write at temperature theta right? So, at particular temperature theta, I will be having R s naught 1 plus alpha s into theta equals to R 1 plus R naught 1 plus alpha 2 into theta, right? Now, from here what we can do is, we know that if we are talking about the series combination, so, if we will be talking about the initial resistances, in that case R s naught will be equals to R naught plus R naught, that is equals to 2 R naught. So, we are going to put this value into this particular equation. So, put R 2 R naught in place of this R s naught. So, we will be having 2 R naught. 1 plus alpha s into theta equals to R naught. If I will be taking R naught from here as my common term. So, let me just uh, first of all open the bracket R naught plus R naught into alpha 1 theta plus R naught plus R naught into alpha 2 theta. If now I will be taking R naught as common, so I will be left with R naught plus R naught that is 2 R naught plus R naught into theta and I am left with alpha 1 plus alpha 2, right? 2 R naught if I will be bringing this R naught here, I will be left with
minus or you can say divide if I will be taking it into division that will uh, going to be cancelled out there. So, 2 R naught is going to be cancelled out from here and then we will be left with let me just uh, what we have to do is just focus over here we have put the value of R S naught that is 2 R naught we have been putting this value here 1 plus alpha is theta equals to R naught plus R naught alpha 1 theta plus R naught plus R naught alpha 2 theta right. From here what I have did it did is what I did is 2 R naught 1 plus alpha is theta equals to R naught plus R naught that has been came out to be 2 R naught. Now in these two equations in these two particular terms I have taken R naught and theta as common. So, I am left with alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So, if I am going to now divide this, I will be left with, let me just remove this equation from here, I will be left with 1 plus alpha s theta equals to 1 plus theta into alpha 1 plus alpha 2 upon 2, right. Now, if I will be moving in the same direction, I will be left with alpha s theta equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided by 2. I am not going to solve this particular complete derivation over here. If you are going to apply the same approach, you will be left with alpha s equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 upon 2, right. Now, in the options given, uh, given to us, I will I am going to check for the series combination. So, for series combination I, ha I am having alpha 1 plus alpha 2 upon 2. Let me just remove this theta from here because we are now having only this much. So, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 upon 2 I can see this is present in option A. This is not present in option B because series combination has been given as alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So, this cannot be the answer. Alpha 1 plus alpha 2 again this cannot be the answer. but we are having a dilemma between A and D. Now, what we have to do is we have to check for the parallel combination. Here we have done only for the series combination. To find it out for the parallel combination, we are going to apply the same approach. Again, for parallel combination, We are now having with us R p equals to R 1 R 2 upon R 1 plus R 2. So, your R p into you can write it as P naught equals to R naught 1 plus alpha 1 theta into R naught 1 plus alpha 2 theta divided by you know what I am writing over here R 1 is R naught 1 plus alpha 1 theta R 2 is R naught 1 plus alpha 2 theta. Again same terms but in addition plus R naught 1 plus alpha 2 into theta this is nothing but the 2. Now again if you are going to solve for this you can see over here we can if we are taking the parallel combination we will be having R naught into R naught upon R naught into R naught. If we are talking about the initial resistances we will be having with us R naught into R naught that means R 1 R 2 upon ok sorry upon R 1 plus R 2. The same formula we are using but for the initial resistances. So, we are now having this is R naught square divided by 2 R naught. So, R naught R naught cancel we are left with R naught by 2. So, we are going to put this R P naught as R naught by 2 in place of this. So, just put this value R naught by 2 into alpha P plus theta 
will be equals to r naught 1 plus alpha 1 theta into r naught 1 plus alpha 2 theta or you can do one thing you can take this r naught as r naught square in the beginning and you can take r naught and r naught as common from here you will be left with 2 r naught into 1 plus alpha 1 theta plus r naught into alpha 2 theta. You can just move up to this step what we have did is we have done we have just put this value r naught by 2 till here and we have started solving r naught into r naught that will be r naught square so I have taken it in the beginning 1 plus alpha 1 theta into 1 plus alpha 2 theta. If you are now going to open this bracket you will be having r naught plus r naught alpha 1 theta. So here plus again r naught plus r naught alpha 2 theta. Now we are what we have did is again I am going to just uh, do it for you r naught into r naught r naught plus r naught that is 2 r naught plus r naught alpha 1 theta plus r naught alpha 2 theta. That we will be having right now from here uh, if I will be taking r naught as common so I will be left with I will be left with r naught by 2 alpha p plus theta equals to r naught square 1 plus alpha 1 theta multiply 1 plus alpha 2 theta divided by if in this equation we are going to take r naught as common so we will be having r naught 2 plus alpha 1 theta plus alpha 2 theta ok. So now r naught and r naught has been cancelled from here one again one r naught and r naught this has been cancelled. So we are now having alpha p plus theta equals to 2 into 1 plus alpha 1 theta into 1 plus alpha 2 theta divided by 2 plus alpha 1 theta plus alpha 2 theta. This is really a cumbersome method because this is the only method that we are having with us to solve the question because this is one simple formula that we are applying and just basic mathematics you are going to have to have to apply the have to apply the equations have to solve these equation with the similar manner. Now you are left with alpha p plus theta in the similar manner if you will be going if you will be reaching up to this alpha p you will be again left with alpha p equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided by that means you need to just resolve this equation this we have reached up to here but again if you are going to just fuse the equation merge the equation and at the last I can give you a hint what you have to do is you have to just rationalize the equation at the very moment when you are going to rationalize the equation you are going to have this particular value and one more thing one more hint that I can give you in this equation is that this alpha 1 and alpha 2 these are very small values so whenever you will be encountered with alpha 1 alpha 2 you can directly ignore them or if you will be having alpha 1 plus alpha 2 whole square you can directly ignore them right. So this was the hint for the further steps because I am time congested so I cannot tell you the whole steps I am just time bound. Now alpha p is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 divided by 2. So yeah I can see that in the option number d we are having this option before us so that means definitely this should be the answer of the question. This was some, uh, I must not say that this was the difficult question, but this is the cumbersome question because 
unsufficiently we are making it lengthy and lengthy and lengthy but this has to be the lengthiest question okay so now we will be moving towards the next question of the session that will be the question number four So the question number 4 says that the resistance of the series combination of two resistances is S. When they are joined in parallel the total resistance is P. Now if S equals to NP then the minimum possible value of N is what? So again we have to apply one particular thing that if we are talking about the series combination we know that if we are having two resistance before us that means that we can consider by our own say that this is R1 and R2 right. Now if I am talking about the series combination here we have been given one notation that is S. S equals to R1 plus R2. Similarly here P will be equals to P means parallel combination. So parallel combination will be R1, R2 upon R1 plus R2. Now in the question we have been given this condition that is if S equals to NP. So we are going to apply S equals to N into P. S is R1 plus R2. So we are going to put this value over here R1 plus R2 will be equals to n into this particular value that is r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2. Now what we are going to do is we are going to find out the value of n from here because we have to do only this particular thing in the question we have to find out the value of n. From here what we can do is our n has been came out to be equals to r1 plus r2 whole square divided by r1 into r2 just from this equation right. So now what we can do is we can open this bracket we will be having r1 square plus r2 square plus 2 into r1 r2 divided by r1 into r2. Now if you will be further solving it you will be having R1 upon R2 plus R2 upon R1 plus 2 because this R1 R2 will be getting cancelled. So you are left with this equation. Now how to solve it further? Because by looking at this R1 upon R2 and R2 upon R1 I can just imagine that if I will be taking the geometric mean these both are going to be cancelled it out. So we, we just know that arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to, to the geometric mean. Now what is arithmetic mean? In this equation if I am going to apply the arithmetic mean that will be R1 upon R2 this is AM I am writing about AM equals to R1 upon R2 plus R2 upon R1 divided by 2 this is the arithmetic mean and if I talk about the geometric mean geometric mean is under root R1 upon R2 into R2 upon R1 right. So this R2, R1, this all has been cancelled. Now if I am going to apply these two in this particular situation, I will be left with, let me just remove this as I know that arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to geometric mean. So arithmetic mean is R1 upon R2 plus R2 upon R1 upon 2 is greater than or equal to this particular value that means geometric mean. So now this is nothing but the under root 1 or you can simply say this as 1. So we are having now R1 upon R2 plus R2 upon R1 
is greater than or equal to 2. Right. Now to find out the value of n, I am going to put these r1 upon r2 plus r2 upon r1 which is greater or equal to 2. So, my value of n will be now 2 plus 2. So, that means n has came out to be equals to 4, right? So, we, we are now going to check whether n equals to 4 is available in the option or not. Yeah, this is the very first option that is option number A. So, we are going to tick over this. That means this is definitely the correct answer for the question, right? So, now I am going to move towards the next question that will be the question number 5. So, the question number 5 has been given in the form of a circuit. We have to tell the total current supplied to the circuit by the battery. Okay. So, here is the battery as you can see. This is the positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. These four resistances are connected like this. First of all, I am going to simplify the circuit to find out the current in the circuit. What you have to observe over here is that this 2 ohm and 6 ohm resistance, their one arm has been connected to each other at one point and their other arm are this and this, but they are joined together. So, that means they are connected in parallel. What do we mean by parallel combination? If we are having two resistors whose two arms are connected together, they are called to be in the parallel situation. So, that means I am going to just make this as like this. This is 2 ohm and 6 ohm resistors. Okay. We have covered these two resistors. Let me just first of all make the battery over here. Okay. So, now we can see that one arm of this uh, resistor that is 1.5 resistors are connected at the junction of 2 and 6 ohm resistor and the other end is connected to the negative terminal. So, that means this resistance should be here. One arm is connected to the negative terminal that means this is 1.5 ohm resistor and the other arm is connected at the junction of them. Now, if I talk about the 3 ohm resistor, you can see that one arm is connected to one arm of the battery, another arm is connected to the another half of battery. So, that means this is going to be like this. This is the 3 ohm resistor, right? So, now this circuit has been simplified in this form. We have to calculate the current in this particular circuit. You can see that when the two resistors are connected in parallel, what will be the combination? That will be 2 into 6. Let me just write first of all R1, R2 upon R1 plus R2. So, your R dash will be equals to R1 into R2. That means 12 upon R1, R2. 12 upon 8. So, you will be having 1.5 ohm. So, this has been, has been now simplified into one another form. Let me just make one another circuit. This has been simplified like this. Like this. Now, this is your 1.5 ohm resistor. This is again has 1.5 ohm and this is 3 ohm and this is battery has been given as 6 volt. Now, again what we can see here, if I will be taking the combination 1.5 plus 1.5 because they are connected in series. So, the combination is 3 ohm. Now, it will be more simplified. I can write it as 3 ohm. So, this is 3 ohm. Now, this 3 ohm and 3 ohm, they are connected in parallel. So, their combination will become as, let me just write R equivalent. 
3 ohm plus 3 ohm. Again the parallel combination R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. So that means if you will be solving it, so your R equivalent has been came out to be 1.5 ohm. Now you can solve this as, let me just remove this and this here 1.5 ohm. Definitely you can find out the current in this circuit now, I equals to V upon R. Your V is nothing but the 6 volt and the R is 1.5. So your R is came out to be 4 ampere. And this we have to check whether it is available in the option or not. So yeah, I can see that option number C is came out to be 4 ampere. So this is the correct answer for the question, right? What we have to do is just to simplify the circuit and nothing else. The question was very simple. We will be now moving towards the next question that will be the question number 6. Okay. So, in the question number 6, they, they say that the length of a given cylindrical wire is increased by 100%. Let me just first of all write, earlier the length is L. Now the length has been increased by 100%. So, it has been increased L plus 100% of L. Or you can write it as L plus 100 upon 100 into L. Right? So, what has become? it is 2L. So, that, that means L dash is nothing but 2L. That is new length. Uh, and next thing what they are saying is that due to consequent decrease in the diameter, the change in the resistance of the wire will be what? We have to find out the change in resistance R dash, right? And that also will be in the form of percentage. Now we know that because they are talking about the cylindrical wire. So what is the area of cylinder? Pi r square h. Or because we are talking about the wire, we just generally say that we are going to take the cross section area. So that is pi r square, right? So now what we are going to do is, we know that volume will remain same. Whatever we will be doing, whether we, we are increasing the length and consequently the diameter has been decreasing, but the volume will remain same. So, what is the volume of uh, the cylinder? That is pi r square h. Now, oh sorry, earlier I was saying the area. Actually, I was talking about the vol uh, volume. So, pi r square l will be now changing into pi r dash square l dash. We know that l dash is nothing but 2l. So let me just write it as r dash square into 2l. And this is pi r square l. So this pi pi cancelled, this l l cancelled, we are having with us r dash equals to r square upon 2. Now, because I have to find out the change in the resistance. So, I am having length, I am having radius, can I now find the change in resistance? Definitely, because I know that resistance is rho L upon A, where L is the length and A is the area. Now, rho, earlier this was rho L by A, but if I talk about the R dash, that will be rho L dash by pi r dash square, right? So, your L dash is what? 2L, r dash is what? r square by 2. So, that will be okay. What I am doing is, I am just putting the value of r dash square. From here, your R dash square value has been came out to be R square by 2, right? So, I am just putting this value over there. 
So, what I can see is that this has came out to be equals to rho L upon pi r square. Rho 4 L upon pi r square. Or you can say this is nothing but this is equals to 4 rho L by A. You can write this as nothing but rho L upon pi r square, right? So, this is nothing but rho L by A. Or you can say that your r dash has been equals to 4 times of r, right or wrong, right? So, your r dash is 4 r. Now, we have to find out the change in resistance. This is the important thing. To find out the change in resistance, what we will be doing is, we know that delta r will be what? r minus r dash. So, earlier it was 4 r minus r. that means 3r, right? So, your delta r is now 3r, but we have to calculate in the form of percentage. So, your delta r in percentage will be equals to 3r by 100 or you can write it as just put the value of r, nothing else. I can just remove it here remove it from here because directly we can understand if we are talking about the resistance in the form of percent. So, definitely 3 R we are having the change. So, that means 300 percent will be our percentage change in the resistance. So, now we have to see A option is 200, B is 100, C, uh, yeah, okay. So, the D option is the correct answer that means 300 percent is going to be the change in the resistance. Right students? Now we will be moving towards the next question as we have completed this question. See the questions are uh, not so tough, but if you know the concept, because the question, the, these all these questions that I am giving you, these all are previous year questions. So you can see what is the level of questions for you if you are studying regularly, I know the question is easy for you, okay. So, here the question number 7 has been given in the circuit shown below, each battery is 5 volt. We can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 batteries are connected in the circuit and each battery is having potential of 5 volt and their internal resistance are 0.2 ohm. This is for every battery that is connected over here. Now, what I, what we have to tell them, what will be the reading in the ideal voltmeter? This is the voltmeter that has been connected over here. We have to tell what will be the reading in this ideal voltmeter. First of all, to tell the reading, we should be calculating what is the voltage, what will be the EMF in the circuit. So, here we are going to find out the terminal potential difference, but before that we will be calculating the total voltage in the circuit. So, if I will be talking about the, first of all, if I will be talking about the current in the circuit, that will be I equals to V upon R. So, your V is the V of all the batteries that has been given. So, 8 into how much? 5 volt into the resistance of all 8 batteries. All the 8 batteries has 8 into 0.2 ohm. So, I has came out to be 25 ampere. This is the current in the circuit. Now, because I have to find out the terminal potential difference, I am going to apply one formula over here and this formula is V equals to E minus IR, right? Now, because I have to find out the value of E, I know the EMF has been given as 5 volt. Here you can see all the EMF has been given as 5 volt. So, just apply this 5 minus I, your I is 25. 
into r r has been given as point or i can write it as first of all my mistake i should write it as i into r that is internal resistance and the value of internal resistance is 0.2 so that means 5 minus 5 that is 0 volt so your ideal voltmeter will show the zero reading because the terminal potential difference has came out to be zero okay so yeah i can see that option number c is having the correct answer that is zero volt is the correct answer for the question as you can see the question was simpler the question was easy but you have to understand the concept and nothing else okay the circuit makes us afraid the circuit makes us scared how lengthier this question will be but this is not the truth okay we'll be now moving towards the next question of the session that will be the question number eight okay so in this question to verify the ohm's law a student is provided with a test resistor rt a high resistance r1 a small resistance r2 two identical galvanometers G1 and G2 and a variable voltage source. So the correct circuit to carry out the experiment is what? Now this is a theoretical question you have to understand whatever I have taught you in the theory in the, in the part where we have discussed about the galvanometer, the ammeter, the voltmeter. I should tell you that an ammeter is a device which is always connected in series right and voltmeter is a device which is always connected in parallel in the circuit voltmeter not the voltage it is connected in parallel in the circuit now if i talk about the structure of you can say the internal structure of the ammeter and voltmeter in the case of ammeter we know that a small resistance here we say that small resistance as shunt now this small resistance shunt is connected in parallel and here in this case in the voltmeter the high resistance let me just mark as a difference a high resistance connected in series with the galvanometer now in the question we have been given that a high resistance R1 so if I am talking about the high resistance that means R1 should be connected in series with the G so we will be now checking what should be R1 should be connected in series with G And here we are talking about the small resistance. In the question, we have been given the small resistance is R2. So R2 should be connected in parallel with G. R2 should be connected in parallel with the galvanometer that is G. Now we have to check whether this is available or not. R2 should be connected in parallel with G. Look at this side. R2 should be connected in parallel with G. In this case, first of all, R2 is connected in parallel with G1. But because two identical galvanometers G1 and G2 has been given also. Yeah, and second thing, this R1 is connected in series with G2. R1 should be connected in series with G. First of all, we are talking about, uh, let me just 
with a test resistor a high resistance R1. So, I will be talking about if I am talking about the high resistance. So, I should talk about this as G1 and this as G2 right. So, this G1 should be connected in parallel should be connected with parallel to with the series to R1. Is G1 connected in series with R1? No. So, this is not the correct answer. In this option R1 is connected parallel to the G1, but here what we have we, we have seen R2 should be connected to parallel. So, this cannot be the correct answer. In this option I can see that R1 is connected in parallel in series with G1, R1 is connected in series with G1 right this is true. R2 is connected in parallel with G2, R2 should be connected in parallel with G2, again this is correct and also to find out the ammeter, to find out the reading of ammeter and voltmeter, the load resistance, if I am talking about the test resistor or you can say the load resistor, that should be in the form of like this. Here the voltmeter always connected in parallel a meter always connected in series right as I have earlier written over here a meter is always connected in series with the test resistor in the voltmeter the test resistor will be connected in parallel. So, here this test resistor is in parallel with the uh, voltmeter this is in series with the voltmeter. So, definitely with no other doubts in our mind this must be the correct answer for the question ok. So, we will be now moving towards the next question of the session that will be the question number 9. Ok. So, here we can say that a conductor with rectangular cross section has dimension A into 2A into 4A. If we are been given this resistor, uh, we have been given this rectangular cross section and the dimensions had been given that must be length into breadth into height. So, this will be your length, breadth and height. As shown in figure, the resistance across AB is X, across CD is Y and across EF, that is EF that's, that is CD and this is AB, X, Y and Z then we have to calculate and tell them which option is the correct answer. So, to first of all find out the resistance across A B, let me just first of all say that X or you can say resistance across A B will be equals to rho L upon A, right. Now, in this case A B, what will be the length? If I am talking about the A B, I will be talking about this particular area, this A B and if I am talking about this particular area, the length and breadth that means if I will talk about the area that would be A into 2 A, but the length will be considered as this much because I am talking about the whole length of A B. So, length will be 4 A divided by area that means A into 2A. So, you will be having ok. Two rho upon A right. Now, if I talk about the another portion that means C D, if I will be taking along C D that is Y. again rho L upon A and in this case L will be what? If I am talking about the C D, I am talking about this particular area. Okay. So, now in this case of C D, I know that the length will be this much that means the height of the rectangular box. So, the height of rectangular box is what? This is A. So, I will be taking the length as A divided by area. So, area in this case will be 
फोर ए इंटू टू ए ओके नाउ इफ आई टेक द नेक्स्ट केस दैट इज जेड आर अक्रॉस ई एफ दैट विल बी अगेन रो एल अपॉन ए एंड पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ एल हियर इफ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द ई एफ I am talking about this particular area. Okay, so if I am talking about this particular area, that is E F. So in this case, the length will be the breadth of the box that has been given. So that means this should be the two A. And if I am taking the area of this uh, portion, that is E F, this particular portion, if I am talking about, that will be A into four A. So that will be if I am taking rho upon A from here, from all these here. This as common, so you are now having point five rho by a. This is two rho by a, and this will be something uh, because this is one point eight. So this will came out to be point one rho by a, something like this, right? Now we can see here because we have to tell them the combination. I can see that this is the value of x. X is greater than z. And z is greater than y, so this is the option that we have to correct. So x is greater than z, greater than y. Okay, so the D is the correct answer for the particular question. This was the simplest question, but you have to just make a little use of your mind over here, and the question is nothing much typical. So we will be now moving towards the next question. the question that we are going to now encounter will be the important question because this question is related to potentiometer and we can, we cannot afford to uh, forget the topic where we are having so many electronic devices to measure the internal resistance to measure the emf so we cannot forget that and definitely one or two questions are going to be arrived in any of your exam from this particular topic So the question says that in the figure, the potentiometer wire of length L equals to hundred centimeter, and the resistance nine ohm. So the resist uh, the potentiometer wire that means A B, the length has been given as hundred centimeter, and the resistance of this wire A B is given as nine ohm. that is joined to a cell of emf e1 equals to 10 volt and internal resistance r1 equals to 1 ohm another cell of emf e2 equals to 5 volt and internal resistance r2 equals to 2 ohm is connected as shown the galvanometer g will show no deflection when the length ac is what so basically we have to find out the length of ac okay so here one important thing has been said over here the galvanometer g will show no deflection if it is showing no deflection that means this should be the balance point and if i am going to start with the question first of all i should uh, tell you the basic and the basic is that potential drop across if we want to find out the length of ac we know that potential drop across ab sorry ac Will be proportional to the length of AC. So, if we want to find out the length of AC, we have to find out the potential drop across AC. And to find out the potential drop across here, we should know the resistance and the current in the circuit. Now, to find out the current in the circuit, I'll be firstly considering one particular thing. I'll be considering the current in the above circuit. So. current in the above circuit will be i 
I equals to V upon R. Here V is 10 volt and the R is 1. So that is 10 ampere. Now to find out the potential drop across AC, we know that this AB is having 100 centimeter length and the resistance 9 ohm. So just come with me this side. If 100 centimeter of wire has 9 ohm resistance, so 1 centimeter of wire will be having 9 upon 100 ohm resistance. I have to find out the value of AC. Let us just suppose say that AC equals to L. Now to find out the resistance of this particular length AC, that means L centimeter that will be having 9 upon 100 into L ohm. Now we can easily find out the potential drop across AC. That means I know that potential drop across AC will be equals to V equals to I into R. I into 9L upon 100. Okay, so here what I have seen is that I have been given the R1 as 1 ohm and E1 as 10 volt. So the current here has came out to be equals to I equals to 10 upon 1 that is 10. So I am going to put this value I over here that is 10 into N 9L upon 100. To find out the value of L from here what I can do is I will be saying that let me just write it again 10 into 9L upon 100. Now here I know that in this particular my E or you can say the V that means the terminal potential difference that is equals to 5 volt. So here E2 is nothing but equals to VAC. So I am just putting the value of E2 over here that means 5 volt 5 equals to 90 L upon 100 or you can find out the value of L from here the value of L will be came out to be 55.5 centimeters something and that will be your answer. And let me just tell you one thing you can just check one thing over here whether I have make it correct or not to find out the current in the above circuit. To find the current in the above circuit I have used this formula I equals to V by R. Here V have been taken as 10 volt and R has been taken as 1 volt. Yeah, so in the circuit, okay, sorry, one thing that I forgot is that this AC, AB, its resistance has been given as 9 ohm. So let me just write over here, this is nothing but the 9 ohm. So if I am finding out the current in the complete above circuit, so the R equivalent will be 9 ohm plus 1 ohm. That means total current will be 10 upon 10 and that will be 1 ampere. Okay, so now if you are going to put the value in place of this 10 that will be 1. So you will be now having your value of V equals to 9L by 100 and from here your value of V is nothing but 5. L equals to 500 by 9. So from here your value will be came out to be something as 55.5 centimeter. Okay, so now we have to check whether the option is available or not. 55.55, okay, so the option number B, that must be the correct answer for the question. So we are done with all the question of JE mean exercise for the chapter current electricity. Just keep practicing, just keep learning the formulas that we have covered till now in the chapter. Don't forget the Wheatstone bridge, the potentiometer, the slide wire bridge and so more. And keep practicing, we will be meeting again in the next session where we will be together solving the question for the pattern J advanced. Just keep practicing, stay safe, take care, bye bye.